This paper represents the first case in which a Wolbachia bacterium has been transferred from one plant hopper to another plant hopper and as a consequence inhibits the um, transmission of viruses from one plant to the next plant. One of the challenges in growing rice is that you can get plant viruses that can damage your crop substantially. So in these pictures, we can see some of the damage caused by viruses. Now, these viruses are generally spread by plant hoppers, and they are particularly damaging around the Asian region, where they are responsible for substantial decreases in rice yield. So what we've done in this paper is to transfer Wolbachia, which is a bacterium living inside the cells of the rice um, plant hopper, between two species of rice plant hoppers. So I want to know the small brown plant hopper, so that was the donor strain, and the second one is known as brown plant hopper, which is probably the major pest of rice, in effect, and that was the recipient strain. And the two Wolbachia strains that we were looking at were the WSTRI strain, which was the donor Wolbachia, and the WLUG strain, which is the Wolbachia that's natively present in the brown plant hopper. And Wolbachia are in their symbiont bacteria, so in other words, they live inside the cells, as indicated by those red marks in that bottom picture there. So you transfer the Wolbachia by a process called microinjection. So what you do is you take cytoplasm from the donor, and then through a very tedious and long-winded process, you transfer that cytoplasm to eggs, and you then look for the infection once those eggs, of course, develop and produce adults. So in this case, we're taking the cytoplasm from the small brown plant hopper, and we're putting it into this major pest, the brown plant hopper. And along the way, what we do is we transfer the Wolbachia strain. So after the transfer, we then screened a very large number of brown plant hoppers, and we found a line eventually that was carrying the Wolbachia, this new Wolbachia strain, this WSTRI strain. So we then used fish to look at the distribution of this Wolbachia and the tissue of the brown plant hopper. And on the left-hand side, you can see the picture of the ovaries, and you can see there's lots of this Wolbachia presence in the ovary tissues. The middle picture shows you where the native Wolbachia is located. It also found the ovaries, but at a much lower density. And we've also generated uninfected lines where the Wolbachia is not present. So we know that the Wolbachia after transfer was present in the ovary tissue. We've also looked elsewhere to see where this Wolbachia is present. And we find this Wolbachia exists inside the midguts of the um, of the brown plant hopper, as indicated in the top pictures there. And we also find that in the salivary glands as well. And that's particularly important because, you know, we know that viruses are transferred through saliva from one plant to the next, and that's really important. So next we looked at the ability of this Wolbachia to affect the reproduction of the plant hopper. So this is something that Wolbachia can commonly do. It can upset reproduction by causing something called incompatibility. So we mated males with females with a different Wolbachia status across those strains to see what the impact was of the Wolbachia. And we found that if we had males with this new Wolbachia strain, this WSRI strain, and we crossed them to females, without the strain or with the different strain, then we got incompatibility. So you can look at the egg development and when you get embryo death, then basically the eggs shrivel up, as indicated in the bottom there, as opposed to looking quite healthy. So we found this phenomenon in that particular cross. And you know, and when you do these sorts of crosses, you get different levels of incompatibility occurring. So you can score this quite easily by looking at the eggs and whether they develop or not. If they don't develop, as indicated in the left-hand side there, then you get the eggs without um, pigment appearing as the eggs develop. 
On the right hand side, we have the opposite picture. You can see the pigment appearing as those embryos develop. So this incompatibility can be quite easy to score. And normally in brown plant hoppers, you don't see incompatibility, but in that particular cross, you do see the incompatibility occurring. Now, our next question is, can this new strain of Wolbachia affect the ability of this brown plant hopper to transmit plant viruses? So we focused on a particular virus called RRSV, or rice ragged stunt virus, which is transmitted by brown plant hopper. It's a very important virus. And what we did was we took plants which were infected by this virus. We then exposed that plant to the plant hoppers with and without this new strain of Wolbachia. And then we moved the plant hoppers to a rice plant that was not infected by the, the um, virus. And then we looked for the transmission ability of that plant hopper. And what we found was that when the plant hoppers had this new Wolbachia strain, they really didn't transmit the virus to the same extent as the plant hoppers that lacked this particular Wolbachia strain. So on the left hand side, we have the morphology of rice plants. So these are the plants that we moved the plant hoppers to. And you can see that you have quite healthy looking rice plants on the left hand side and much more stunted ones affected by the virus on the right hand side. And the only difference here is that the ones on the left hand side were infected by these plant hoppers with this new strain of Wolbachia and the ones on the right were not. So this STRI strain seems to inhibit the ability of these plant hoppers to transfer this particular virus. And you can see that the leaf tissue is also quite different. When you have a virus infection, you typically get this nicking and curling of a leaf and that's present in the plants on the right hand side, but not on the left hand side. Now, the last thing we wanted to look at was the ability of this new Wolbachia strain to invade a natural population that lacked this particular strain. So through that incompatibility mechanism, we expected the Wolbachia to be able to invade because Wolbachia is transferred through the maternal lineage. So mothers transfer Wolbachia to their offspring. So mothers that have this new Wolbachia strain don't show much incompatibility. But of course, when the males from that strain mates with females that lack that strain, you do get incompatibility. So that's the type of huge advantage for plant hoppers that have a new Wolbachia strain. And when you start introducing this Wolbachia into populations, then you find that it becomes a self-spreader. The Wolbachia increases very quickly in frequency. And once it gets to 100%, it stays at 100%. So we now have a way of spreading this Wolbachia and as a consequence of that, we also have the expectation that the transmission of this particular virus will decrease. And of course, the next step is to test this in the field.